didn't work because I clearly got worse and I was dying. Welcome back to the Queendom. If you're new here, I'm the Queen Coat, and this is my channel. So, in today's video, I thought I would do like a reaction video to my adoption story because when I filmed that video, I never went back and watched it. That's why you see a lot of mistakes. Just because I didn't feel like watching it, like I remembered what I said, and I just didn't really want to go watch it again. So I never did. Um, but it's been like a year, so I was like, okay, let me just do a reaction video, see what I said because I really. I don't know, I wanted to see what I said, but this is just a quick little disclaimer thing. Um, I remember when I was making that video, I was like holding back my tears. You guys could see how sad my face was. I remember it, but this time in this video, I'm not gonna hold back anything. I'm just, I'm just gonna, if it's coming out, I'm just gonna let it come out, you know what I mean? So, um, but yeah, that's just a disclaimer. And without further ado, let's get straight into this reaction. <laughs> Okay, so, oh, I got myself, like, a little snack thing, almonds, and a thingy with water. So, I'm gonna, like, watch it on my mom's phone, but I'm gonna put it up on the screen for you guys so you guys can see. I'm so scared. <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. Okay, we haven't even started. Okay. This ad is playing. Okay, wait. Got to turn it up. Oh, wait. I'm so scared. Let's see the date. This was this was published on April the 14th, 2020. And right now it's April 20th. So, 2021. I was so scared. I saw this a few days ago and I was like, uh-uh, I'm, I'm never going to like watch this video. But like, I was like, okay, I should. Yeah, so... Okay, let me just stop talking and let's just, okay. 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 I'm like already getting emotional. Okay, okay. What kind of intro is Hi, this? Hi and welcome. If you're new here and you don't know me, <laughs> my name is Rico and I'm okay. just going to be sharing my adoption story because I feel like I'm finally ready to share with everybody. So, and I also feel like not a lot of people talk about adoption and their stories so can i just say real quick i look so little like what oh look how cute i was okay anyways i'm hoping that if like other people see this and are adopted then maybe they'll also be inspired to share their story so if you want to hear my story then keep on watching so i'm from this tribe and we are called the j and beautiful so like the way we are, like we just all live so close to each other. Nobody gets married and like moves away or anything like that. Everybody just seems to like stay close. And the way we are too, like we are like an actual like tribe, tribe. Like I don't know what tribes are like now, but like we still are that way. And so like the way our like houses are built, like our sticks are like the boundaries and stuff. I don't know how to explain it. Maybe I'll try to insert picture or something, something like that. But anyways, so. Nobody like gets married and moves away. Everybody lives close to each other, so that means everybody knows. Another comment. I hate that I repeat everything like so many times. It bothers me. Whenever I go watch videos, I'm like, why did I just say that like five times in a row? Like what? Business all the time and gossip and stuff like that. So this happened before I was even born. Like so, yeah. I just wanted to say that. But there was my brother, then my other brother, and then my other brother, and then I came, like, after that one. But anyways, so, my, I was, like, I wasn't even, like, you know, I wasn't born yet. So, before I was born, my dad, I don't oh my know, goodness. there, the culture is very different, too, because guys can normally have as many wives as they want, so... But I think the practice is called like polygamy or something. Correct me. Just like how everything works. And so anyways, I don't want my this. dad was married to my mom, of course. And then he started going to town 
which is like i don't know a day's walk away from us because like we didn't have motorcycles or or cars or bikes or anything like that we just like walked everywhere so my dad started going to town and then he started seeing this lady and i guess he like guys i don't know why i shared like there's too much there's too much sharing there's too much of my life out there why did i do that it's too much but i think what i was trying to do is like give a little bit of background but instead i like share my whole life but you know i already ah! i just spilled all okay hold up <sighs> shoot clumsy me some things never change okay that was cringe okay yeah so instead of me like sharing just a little bit i think i shared way too much and uh, yeah but anyways let's just continue i don't know what happened to them but he started liking her and stuff like that and hanging out with her and stuff like that but so he started seeing her and stuff like that and then when he came back to the village to like see my mom and stuff like that the other lady would get mad at him for coming to see my mom and he and then she told him that that he needed to leave my mom and only come to Wait. live with her. She? The lady my dad was seeing. Wait, let me rewind. The other lady would get mad at him for coming to see my mom. And he and then she told him that, she, that he needed to leave my mom and only come to live with her and be with mm -hmm. her only. So anyways... My dad decided to take that advice, what she said, and he decided to leave my mom. So he left, and then, but he was doing stuff with her and coming back to my mom and stuff like that. But he finally just left. I'm way too young so to be talking about that stuff. Mom. She came back and lived with my grandmother in the village, and then, so I don't know if I should give my brother's names because, like. No, you shouldn't. I don't know if I should. No. So, anyways, my future Rico said no. My other brother, and then my other brother, and then me and my mom's stomach. Anyways, so I did have an older brother, but he died before. Why I am I sharing so? So he was the very he was the firstborn, and then yeah, I can't. And then so, anyways, my mom went back to the village, and she. I don't remember saying that part. Like that. And she had to work like extra hard because now she was like living by herself. She didn't have a husband to support her. Mm -hmm. So she would walk to town and stuff like that while pregnant with me. So she just made that life. I don't know. She's she was amazing. Um, I mean, of course. I was in her stomach, but she seems amazing. So anyway, she like had that life going. And then she would walk she would walk there like all day while she was pregnant and then she would walk back like home like just making trips like this that is so sad. just to try to find work and stuff like that so anyways when we were at home my dad came and he wanted to take the kids from my mom he said that they were his kids and so he like took them but he said he only wanted like the perfect kids so he took so he um took my older brother and then my other brother and then my younger brother he left with my mom and then i was in her stomach so like yeah so he took like wait because now there's somebody here yeah so he took my I'm brother and left with the other one that i followed so that's how it was i don't know but can you please go out actually which is like actually it's not it's like in a beam and a beam is like i like two hours drive but like if you're walking that's like two days like walking and stuff like that so because i don't know you get fast at walking when you do it every day you just get used to it and you do it fast so anyways my dad took those my brothers and then my mom was left with my other brother and me and my and like in her stomach so <clears throat> would i have been born already though I'm like trying to not get emotional because so it's not a crying video so anyways so that was done and then well when my dad was like not at home and stuff like that my two other brothers like escaped from there and they 
walk, mind you, they were like 10 and 11. Might have to make so this video private. ran away from there and walked all the way back to where we were, our village. Mm -hmm. And then after that, one more brother remained. So my mom planned on going back and stealing him from my dad when he was not there again. So that's what she did. She planned on going. Okay, guys, just wanted to say real quick. A lot of the information that I was sharing here is what I've been told because I obviously was too little to remember that. So I had to ask some questions. And but the thing is, my brother's my brother that like has all the information because he's old enough to like remember. My grandmother doesn't really want to talk about it. But my brother, yeah, he didn't really want to tell me anything because he's like, uh, the dad just left us. We don't want to really, we don't want you to know anything about him because. We, he, like he doesn't deserve to have that space in our life so even though he was like you know my father like the most I know about him is like his name and that he was married to my mom but everything else my my brother and my family just kept it away from me so they recently told me that stuff but like every year it seems to be changing because it, like I think they just want to confuse me because they're like you shouldn't know so like when I was recently, well, kind of recently, like mm, a few years ago, I went back to visit my village and then, and then when I came back, I was here for like a few more years. And then my brother was like, you know, last time when you were here, like your dad was actually in town. We could have seen him, but like, I didn't want you to see him. I'm like, what? I wanted to see him. What do you mean? So I was like, okay, whatever. But, uh, yeah, stuff like that. Ah! No, we're not saying that. Okay. But just. It keeps happening. They don't want me to, like, know the right information, so they keep changing it around. I guess, I don't know. But anyways, just wanted to say that real quick, and let's get back to the video. And then, so she went back there, and she took my other brother. I feel like I should say their name. No, you not. shouldn't. It'll make the story easier, but anyways, so my brother was taken, so now all of us were together and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And then, so... After my brother was taken and stuff like that, they were all living again with my grandmother. Mm -hmm. And then after that, so my mom got really sick and we, di we didn't really have doctors. We were not even like, we're not educated in that way because nobody went to school. And it's just a village life. So anyways, nobody had like, we didn't even have the money to go to like a doctor and stuff like that. So... My mom got really sick and then she passed mm -hmm. away. So after she passed away, now we were just left with our grandmother. And then, so my grandmother was watching. Guys, can I just say, my grandmother is an amazing woman. One day when I grow up, I wish to be like her because I want to have her strength because she's just very strong and I just, I just admire her so much, but she's like my life savior. I love her so much. She's the queen of my life. Well. My mom now too, she's the queen of my life too, but I'm just saying back then, mm, my grandmother, those, she will always like have a special place in my heart. I love her so much. She's so special to me. One day I want to make it up to her and I promise I will, but the time just hasn't come yet. So, but also my parents is, I'm not saying that like I'm ungrateful for them because I really am grateful for them. It's just hard to like balance both worlds. Like, ah. Uh, I don't know. And stuff like that. And then, but she couldn't do it by herself. So my dad was told to come and get us. Mm -hmm. But after he found out that she she died, he ran away as far as he could. And he didn't want to see us. So he left and then he never came back. So he just kind of like separated. But how can a man, how can you have kids? And then as soon as like your wife dies, you run away and like you as the remaining parent, shouldn't you take care of your kids? Like you were the one that planted the seed in that woman. They're your kids now, you know? So I don't see why, uh, I don't know what possessed him to just say, okay, these are not my kids anymore. Goodbye. Like, and just run away. Like what? Really? If, if I would see him now, I I would really want to hit him in the head, like knock some sense in him because like what, what was in you that said it's okay to do this, to leave your kids behind? Like. We need a parent, but that's why I said I'm thankful for my grandmother because she was our parent. She was both our mother and father and the rest of our family. She was in one person, but yeah. Oh my gosh. 
Okay, just just real quick. Okay. And so we were left with our grandmother and she took care of us and she's still she's she's the queen, so she took I don't care remember of us. saying queen, but I just said and it. Then, that's just and then by then when my mom passed away I was like two. So I was very little, so I don't even really remember like a lot of that. Like what happened before that is just I don't even know why I said I don't remember like I just don't because I was little and your brain does weird things to forget things that are yeah so anyways I don't remember much of that and so after that I grew up being really sick and my grandmother took care of me and my brothers but growing one day I'll tell you guys why like why yeah what I just said I grew up being sick one day I'll tell the world my story, the rest of it. This is just the beginning of it, and there's still more of it. So I'm just not ready to bring the next step. But once I'm ready, I'll tell you guys. I'll tell you. Yep, I was always so sick, and I I don't know why, but also I know why. I just but I was also sick like all the time, and so guys, I was sick to like the point where like. I don't know like part of my memory is missing from when i was younger that's why i had to ask questions like try to fill it in like i remember like good times but also like bad times but it's just like i was in and out because i was so sick like i was just kind of a walking person that was like dead you know like i i i couldn't tell like where it was daytime it was nighttime because i just slept all the time and then I was always in the hospital. I was always just being moved around, having IV in me. And I was just like, you know, it's hard to like really remember a lot when, but yeah, and like I said, when I'm ready, um, yeah. It was hard to do a lot of things like playing with kids because kids would make fun of you. And then my kids grandmother are was very overprotective of me because like, I was little and the kids other kids like to make fun of me and when kids made fun of me I just cried and then I remember this one time when this kid was making fun of me because kids are just that way so honestly this kid was making fun of me and I tried to fight them and my grandmother like got him. me she said like that's not how we do things like no it's never okay to like just like start fighting and stuff like that you just have to forgive them and i was just like i w i did not want to hear that like having to forgive them like after the like what so anyways that's what she always taught me is to never fight back and just like let them say whatever they want because you know the thing my grandmother is so wise she's too wise like can i have half of that if i just had like one percent of it i would be i would be so happy like what I don't know, like, she always just had really good advice because her herself, in the village, she did not like getting into drama. She always stayed out of it. She's just very, she's just a caring person. Like, I don't know, if someone else is hungry and she only has, like, she has rice, she'll give them all the rice. And I'm like, what are you doing? You gotta live too. What are you doing? Get the rice back and don't share it. What are you doing but she's always like yeah just take it just take it because she's just a helper and she wants she doesn't like to see people struggling even though that means that she's gonna be the one struggling she would, would like rather help someone else and i'm just like i don't know i i love her but also she taught me how to stick up for myself so now it's like her turn to stick up for herself because <sighs> okay knows like what he's doing and he has a plan for me and stuff like that so I, I used I just used to like just cry because like I couldn't really do much and so I was just like always sick and we already shared this with help let's move got on to the point like where uh like I was dying sick and the way the village is like people just like know each other's business and talking all the time and stuff like that and so everybody kind of told my grandmother, like, you're wasting food on her. Like, just let her die. Wasting food on me. And was like, no, this is my child. And uh, that's, I'm not going to let that happen. So, so she just kept fighting for me. And she kept taking care of me and my brothers. And everybody was like, oh, she's a crazy woman because she's, like, 
wasting all her food on this dying child that she should just let the child die. And so, like... Let's start again. Because that boy keeps coming in. And I don't want to cry in front of people. Even though I'm going to cry in front of YouTube. But that's not the same as, like, a person standing here and not, they're seeing me, like, with tears here, you know? Because then I feel just awkward because I don't cry in front of people. So, but I'll... Anyways just that way and especially in the village because like everybody's so poor and stuff like that so i see why they would say that but like they they didn't need to say that guys it's not like the village is bad it's just when you live in poverty you just kind of want to help yourself and your family and the people that you care about you know you don't have time to think about oh how's your neighbor doing like uh le like let's help them like you're just thinking about how can i take care of myself that's just how it kind of is it's not that way it's not as bad now compared to back then because there was a lot going on when i was when i was little because like there was also like a, a war kind of going on and so you know i survived so that's all i had to say i survived so but i i really i don't like the way i made my village seem in this in this part because my village is actually a really is beautiful place it's just i don't know we were very isolated and so like we only had our own culture and our own beliefs we didn't like have other cultures to like influence us in what we thought and how we did things because we just were like eh, i don't know concealed in somewhere like a place so but it's a good place please please it's just like you can't just only be good you have to have like good and bad so but this is a bad part of it i guess but there's still a lot of good things about it anyways let's just watch the video so anyways in town there was this man and i don't know if i should say his name either no you should but i feel like he's very important to the story so very should i say his name no well i don't know but anyways there was this man and he he's from Macholi and he's oh, it's too much like information he over to now people are gonna put the two and two together then oh. some people but he came to us so anyways he came there and he was like living in Cotiro. guys Acholi is like our neighboring tribe they're like they're like our cousin cousin tribe and they're very close to us but we're the better tribe because we're more superior and we are i'm just kidding but clearly we're not better because this man came and saved my life so his tribe is good too but yeah they're just like our cousins and we're very close they just speak a different language but like in a and their culture is slightly different but they're like you because you know in uganda there's like so many cultures in one small place i'm like how how but anyways yeah So he lived there and he decided to start this like home for kids that were orphans and lived on the street and needed help. And he started sponsoring them, like sending them to school and stuff like that. And he would just take care of them. So anyways, like I remember this, this day, like very clearly even because he came to our village and he was riding a picky picky, which is a motorcycle. So he came there and he brought us balloons that, and I thought they were like the most amazing <laughs> Naked child. What? on earth. Okay. They were so bright and they were so fun. Anyways, I remember that was like the first visit that he By the way, in that picture, guys, I was like near the front. But you just see, I just didn't say anything because, you know, I was near the front though. One of the small children. So if you want to look, mm, go ahead. So. Came to our village and stuff like that. So he came. Not the little me. naked one. Just I don't even know because there's so many kids, but like somehow he just I say it was God like planning the whole thing and stuff like that. You better so preach. He came to my village and then he saw me and my grandmother and he could he could speak Nakaramjong, which is our language, but like he wasn't he wasn't as good as like the local people because he wasn't from there, but like he knew it guys let me pause it again he wasn't very good at speaking nakaramajong because he had just moved there it's only been like because he himself was still in school at a time like no i don't think he like was still in like school school but like he just had like gone out like 
of it but he was still like a teenager maybe 19 so uh he was but he just came over and he only spoke a choli and like you have to stay at a place for like a little longer than that so he kind of knew like to say some some small words but like not really besides his accent was too strong so you couldn't he couldn't i don't know but he just couldn't speak that's all you need to know small conversation and stuff like that so he started talking to um, my grandmother and stuff like that but my older brother he was educated so he could understand English and he could help like translate too and stuff like the pieces that he was missing so he was so he started talking to my grandmother my grandmother said please help me like my child is sick and she needs help and I don't want her to die so please help me so she said that and he he said he'll do what he could do so when he left he he said he'll come back tomorrow which which is not bad at all he just said he'll just come back tomorrow so he left and then he came back the next day and this time he took me and my grandmother to the doctors to try to get help but the doctors they did like even the doctor's place is not very clean and Nobody really does their job because they're not getting paid well. So everybody's just, they just give you like random medicine just to get rid of you kind of. Because, it, so they just gave you medicine like, okay, so just wait here and you wait and wait guys, all day. And then guys, it's just like, it's sus and it's sketch. Like the doctors, because the, the thing is the government is giving them money like on my village like this this is where we live but the capital is like over here that's where all the like the rich people live you know my village is just a small part over here so why do they need to focus on there you know what i mean so the government just like puts like you know have people places to run things but like they never like come down there to check and see how things are going so you're just sending a like medicine down here but like you're not coming to see if it's actually going out to the people or anything like that because it's sending the medicine there and then those doctors are supposed to give it to like uh distribute it like to people and the uh, to help them they just take the medicine themselves and then they'll sell it to like other people that maybe they're like friends or something they just like have their own thing going on they have like their own little shop thing so they don't even it doesn't make it to the health center because they're taking it like on the way to transporting they're taking the medicine and they're just giving it away so when you get there they're like oh yeah the medicine is coming don't worry don't worry it's coming and we're just like oh okay okay because we're villagers what we can't even really speak english so the fact like i i don't know how to explain it but like, it's just like uh just just i don't know it's hard because it's just corrupt and the government doesn't check down there. Like, yeah. The government needs to do its job. Musevini, but do your job or else I'm going to come fire you. They just give you like random medicine saying hopefully like this will help you or something like that. Honestly. Mm. So they did that and then we got the medicine. We went, we went back. And then so I started taking the medicine because it was like supposed to help my health and stuff like that. But it ended up like making me worse. And we kept going to like doctors and different doctors and stuff like that. We tried everything we could. Like in in our village, like there's a lot of witchcraft and stuff like that. And so guys, we, it's like there's different um witchcraft things you can go to witch doctor for. You can say, um, for example, in my village, it doesn't rain very much over there, so you can go over there and like ask them like cast some thingy to make it rain and sometimes that actually does work don't ask me i'm not a witch doctor but i've seen it happen so it's kind of creepy now that i think about it because back then like oh you know but now i'm like oh what is happening but yeah so you can go for different things you can say oh maybe you no i don't want to use that example no maybe you got hurt or something like maybe a snake bit you you can go to the witch doctor and they have like ways to draw the poison out from you but you also have to give something in return because you know they're doing you a favor business is a business so if if they're doing that to you you have to trade something in sometimes it's money sometimes in the village our food like a sorghum is like huh i don't know why i said that because i don't know how to explain it now sorghum uh, um I don't know how to find to explain it, but or maybe we have corn. 
they say okay give me a picture of corn and you give them like a whole picture and then like maybe sometimes say give me 10 of those because during the hungry season when it's let me slow down during like the hungry season where it's very dry and there's not a lot you that's the food is very valuable because first of all you have to walk far to go to like the nearest town so for you to just like give them a picture of, like 10 and then you get that out of you that's that's worth more because you can be able to walk and you can go maybe find something is it's just like i'm sorry i don't know how to explain it i'm sorry i don't know even went to like witch doctors and asked them like to like cast some sort of spells to save my life and stuff like that but, like everything like when we did that that made it worse like uh, that made it worse when we went to them but anyways we tried everything we could we did everything and then we just kept going back to the doctors and then we did the same thing and then finally we just decided guys it probably didn't work because sometimes you know witch doctors they're still people they just have uh darker powers i guess then it say you were, uh, you had the powers of Jesus, I guess. That's just, then there's two different powers, you know? One of them is dark, one of them is light. So depending, you you both still have power, you know? So when you're going to the witch doctor, they're still a person, but they're like, you know? So they sometimes still make mistakes because maybe they're just in a hurry or something. I'm sorry, but I'm going to explain this as best as I could. Maybe, okay, there's a bullet shell right here. I don't know why, my brother just has it. I think it's like for BB gun or something. But he has a ton of these little things. But maybe you go to a witch doctor and, and then you're like, okay, I'm trying to. I've been having a headache for two months now. I went to the hospital and they can't give me anything because uh, they don't know what I have and nothing seems to help. They're like, okay, so when you go home, they're going to like make get a bully thingy. Just anything they have. They're going to say, oh, this works, this works. And you're going to be like, oh, okay, thank you very much. Mm-hmm. They're going to put a string in it for you, and then they're going to tell you to wear it like this. You're going to wear it, and then you're not going to take it off. They're going to tell you to like keep it on for this long amount. And then so you're just going to give them the payment, and then you're going to go home like expecting to get healed. But that's just what they do. It does Just because they give that to you and say, oh, this is going to help, it does not mean it's going to work, you know? So we tried a lot of these things. They're like, okay, just eat this certain kind of food, and you're like, you'll be healed. And so we're like, oh, praise Jesus, whatever. And But it doesn't... It didn't work because I clearly got worse and I was dying. So, yeah. They moved to the doctor's place and stayed there so, like, they could help me. And then at nighttime, they had to put, like, an IV in me to keep me, like, alive and stuff like that. But I was just getting worse and stuff like that. To the, I was, like, I don't know. The way I was living, like, everything was just blurry. Like, I remember some parts of it, like, most of it, actually, but, like, in a way, pieces are, like, cut out of my memory and stuff like that. So, anyways, but, like, we lived in the doctor's place, but you can't really live there if you don't have money, so that was hard. And the whole time the, that, should I just, no, that guy that saved, that helped save my life, he was, like, paying for the doctor's place and giving me medicine and guys the thing is if the government just did their job this this medicine is even supposed to be free it's supposed to be free for everybody but the thing is the government doesn't come down there to check on the people so the people that have the medicine they're like in power you know so they can just charge whatever because there's no other place so we're all forced to come to this one hospital that has the medicine and so we're willing to, because at the point when we get to the hospital we like actually need help because we wait so long but it's just like it frustrates me because I'm like, just do your job. Like, what are you doing just chilling up there? Like, at least do something for the villagers. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's it's not just the Kampala that needs the help. Like, Kotito, we need help too. So just come near. <sighs> Bring us food. And he was just taking care of us and like stuff like that. And everything that a good person would do, he was doing. So like a good he did person that for would do. nothing in return at all. He just like kept taking me to the doctors and stuff like that and nothing was helping at all so the doctor just said well we did all we can do and you just need to go back home because she's gonna die so my grandmother like we didn't really have a choice so we went back and when we got back like <clears throat> i'm like getting so emotional uh so when we went back 
we went back to our village and everybody like like gossiping and stuff like that everybody just started being more mean to me and my family because like they saw like someone else was helping us us. and so like they just had some sort of hate towards us because they saw that this man was helping us and not them so they were envious i guess and it's not a good thing to have that when you're living in a community where you know everybody and stuff like that because like that's how you kind of survive you need to like have connections to people Mm -hmm. so anyways when they started disliking us and stuff like that they started like being rude to my grandmother and my whole family they started like distancing themselves because they're like oh you don't need our help anymore because you have a man that has money and see he chose he chose your daughter over like the rest of us so now mm, you can go and yeah that's basically what that's what happens like all the time even if i go visit now and i bring something back from my family they're like oh okay so and that's just i'm just like Ugh. oh but anyways it makes me so annoyed So when I was I was living in the village and something else completely was happening in Cotito. So my parents, well, they weren't my parents like then, but they came to Cotito as missionaries and like I didn't know any of this, but so missionaries for four years, but in the first year when they moved there, that's when we met. I'm pretty sure that's how it is. I can ask my mom. But I just probably like put it up in words what she said. So yeah. They came to Cotito's missionaries just to like spread the word and try to be like the Karamajong people and to share the Bible with them and stuff like that. So they were there. They lived there for like total years, four years as missionaries. So they moved there and then the the man that that came to our village that very first time. Maybe I should just give his name Mr. R. Yeah, I'll call him Mr. Too much R. information. So Mr. R went to my parents' house and he said, you know, there's this kid in the village and she needs help. So if you could just come one day and see what you can do about it and stuff like that, it would be really appreciated. So they decided to go to my village. Like, I think like a week later they came. And like, you know, ever like... When they first guys there's even like pictures of like uh like when my when my parents my family came to visit my village the first time there's even pictures of little Rico you guys want to see them yeah! okay I'll see if I can figure how to put it up here you know but there we definitely have a ton of them and I'm just like oh that's so embarrassing thank Jesus that we can have a glow up thank Jesus that I'm still alive thank Jesus for everything in, like they, they were so white they looked like they were okay so they were just they just came and first of all that was like bad news because they're like white people coming to like see me so after they guys just, they were so white because i've never seen a white person before in my entire life i well okay my entire life is like seven, seven years I've been alive. And see, they just come walking to my village like this, hmm? with their two feet, with their little, little children. I was like, oh my gosh, look, there's a mini one. There's a big one. Who's my dad? And then there's like a, a lady. And I was like, oh, wow. But they just looked like glowing. And I'm like, it was kind of scary. I'm, I'm going to be honest because I was not honest in this video. It was kind of scary because, like, you know, when they're walking towards you, we all ran back in our village. Some of us were like, I was hiding behind my grandma until they, like, came and took my hand. And I'm like, mm. but, you know, so I was like, I was scared. I was scared. I was scared. But they're not scary people, guys. They're just a different skin tone, you know? But I was scared. <laughs> okay. See, everybody hated me even more. And my grandmother and my family because like these white people are coming to help me and they were so jealous so jealous um so they started visiting me like often more often and stuff like that but they couldn't just take me like with them back Mm -hmm. because like my grandmother like we they didn't speak the same language because they spoke english and she spoke from jung and very different guys 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 i remember when i was living in the village and every time, this is like when my family was still in the process of figuring things out. I didn't even know what was happening, but some for some reason, when I saw them, I just knew like, okay, everything was going to be okay. 
that's what that's what I thought and felt. So I was like, okay, everything's gonna be paid. In fact, I'm gonna become their daughter. But this is me speaking not German because I couldn't speak English. I didn't know what was happening. So me and my friends like ching ching what ching ching trying to like mimic what they were saying. But yeah, so we were just speaking. No one ever anybody did anything to upset me. I'm like, oh don't worry, don't worry, the Muzungu will come get me. Don't worry, the Muzungu will come get me and save me. Uh, I'm so embarrassed. And I'm like, you see the Muzungu? That's that's gonna be my parents. That's what I was telling and then people just like slap me, slap me, and I'm just like, Don't worry, because once they come here they'll beat all of you guys up. I was just talking them up and I'm like, once they come here they're gonna get they're gonna put me in the car and I'm gonna go home with them and I'm gonna live with them. And everybody was just like, ah! all the kids. This I was talking to the kids, but also, some of the parents, when they're ever, they're like, oh my gosh, you're so dirty and disgusting. And I'm like, don't worry, because once the Muzungus come here, I'm going to get all clean and I'm going to get washed up and I'm going to look beautiful. And they really did not like to hear that because they wanted me to die. But was I dying? No, because Jesus said it was not my time. So, stuff like that. So, it was hard to communicate, saying, like, let her just come and live with us and stuff like that, because that would not make any sense. So they came and they took me to like better hospitals that cost more money and stuff because like that. They we had, had to travel like further like so like I had to get on, on a car and go to like a completely different place to just go to hospitals and we tried like everything we could. All those doctors. Guys, the thing is, like we tried all the local hospitals that were like close to us. We knew there were other hospitals around, but like we did not have the money. We did not have the transport. So and besides, when you get there and you get to the hospital, they're going to, like, make you stay overnight. Sometimes they make you even stay six months. And then, like, but how are you supposed to take care of yourself and live? So, like, that's why we just, like, we kind of, you know, that's why it was amazing when they came. Because they took me to a completely different place and they covered for everything. My parents are so good. What can I say? My parents are good. <laughs> okay. And then... So nothing was even working. Those doctors couldn't help me at all because then I just kind of stopped eating because like nothing tasted good. Like, so I was just getting worse. And so I just went back to live with my grandmother in the village and then they just came and visited me often and just like brought stuff, whatever they wanted to bring, I guess. And then, but like- Guys, on that first trip, when my parents came to get me from the village, we decided to go like on a car like they took not like we decided to go on like a road trip you know what i mean I was, that's how i was making sound but like they got me and they put me in a car and we're going to a hospital but on this hospital guys i remember this so i remember because like they took me like they took us shopping so that way we could get like whatever we needed and um uh, minus the food because like we we don't know how to order food okay like how are we supposed we didn't even we didn't understand that so like they would order food for us but like we would like buy the clothes and I remember this one time with my papa, he took me and we got like these shoes. They're like, they were like green on the bottom and then they like had orange stripes. That's probably why I still love the color orange and green because I was like, those were the first colors that I like saw of like bright shoes that was like mine. That was mine, you know, it was like my first, like, I don't, it just felt different because like I've had shoes before, but like. It was just like the shoes were like out of love because my dad, I was holding his hand. Like it was my dad then, but I was like holding his hand and like, oh my God, I'm going to cry. Oh my gosh. I can't believe I'm crying. What? Okay. Okay, so let me oh, hold up, guys. I can't even see anything. Okay, so basically, like I would hold my dad's hand, and like he would take, he like took me, walked around like the place a little bit, and then like when once I saw the shoes, it was just like a good feeling to be able to see like shoes, and like get to choose them myself, without like having to share with anybody. Okay, hold up. Stop crying. Stop. Guys, it's not like I'm sad crying. It's like I'm just happy. I'm like very happy. But it's just a good memory, I guess. But it was just nice being able to choose like the shoes that I wanted. And they were my shoes. And I got to choose my like everything by myself. And it was mine. It was just like, it was just 
I don't know how to explain the feeling, but it was just like the first time that I was able to like have my own stuff and I don't know, it was just, I don't know. Okay, so, but anyway, it's it, yeah. I don't know where we were in the story, but let me just play this and let's continue. <laughs> me and my crazy face. Like they couldn't really bring much even because when they did, everybody just hated us even more. This one we went back to yeah, the village. so everybody yeah. just hated us even more than before. <laughs> And so we just guys and even at the hospitals whenever like they saw us like walking with my parents they would like hate us because of like oh like white people are like helping them like uh and so they they just automatically they just didn't like like us and like there's different stuff that happened like because my parents couldn't stay overnight at the hospital and so my grandmother like would stay but like in the morning they'll come but like it was just like the way they treated my grandmother and me compared to when my when my parents were there is just very sad because we're just very rude and like as soon as they're there oh they're like oh they have money like let's let's be nice okay so but that's just how life is and we must be strong says me as i'm crying but anyways we're not talking about that i just lived with my grandmother and my parents said that since they couldn't just be like hey like what if we adopted like her they couldn't just come and ask my grandmother that question because like what is adoption nobody knows that there and that is unheard of so they didn't ask her that question so they just went back home and they said they prayed to god and they said if if my grandmother wants me to live with them then guys i only found out that my parents were praying about this because the thing is, it's not that they're not telling me anything. It's just I don't ask because I'm like, I'm not sure if it's better to forget that it happened or to know, like, what actually happened. So, like, but I asked my mom and I was like, okay, so what made you guys just come to the village and, like, adopt, you know? But she's like, oh, well, at first, like, we weren't actually going to adopt, but then, like, we decided to pray about it. And they told everybody in America that they wanted to adopt a little girl but and they needed prayers so everybody like jumped on the team and they're like yes so jesus we really did they all like started praying you know what i mean and then i guess god was like yes that's the one down there that little one that everybody's saying is the ugly duckling get her because i'm gonna make her a beautiful swan one day and she's gonna be amazing that's the one i want yeah so that's what happened that's the end of the story okay to come to their house and ask them that but they're not going to ask her so they never mentioned anything to her and so like a week later or something my grandmother went up to we went up to their house and she said well you know like there's nothing i can do for her and my grandmother her went on her own and have a good life so if you could take care of her and like put her in school for me and stuff like that and be her parents until i can that'll be very much so appreciated but like they never told her any of that she went and did that on her own and that was like the answer to their prayer because like that's what they were praying for so <laughs> she went up to their house and i remember this day very clearly i remember we walked through through their gate we went when we knocked on their house stuff like that people were like no don't go see them because we like when guys basically what was happening like on the day when we decided to like we were gonna like i didn't know what was happening i just go with my grandmother everywhere sometimes i just think we're going to visit someone and then because my grandmother has connections to everybody like i don't know how she does but like she she like knows everybody she knows how to get what she wants because the way she just carries herself is just like i don't know but the day that we decided to like um from my village to go all the way to town it was like uh, quite a far walk so but I don't know why but on that day there was like there was a truck at the village like there's this is our village and there's like a small little town here but they sell like biscuits and sodas but like not you know what I mean so it's just like it was weird because that morning so it was just weird now I'm thinking about it I'm like wow Jesus really was planning like he was planning and planning like since I was born but anyways so like we got up and then there was like a truck that was there that was like on its way to town so we were like oh we'll just get like a ride but i remember when i got in the car it was like the first time that i've ever got in like well it actually wasn't the first time but like we just don't really ride in cars 
Let me put this down. It's annoying. We don't like really ride in cars, so it's like very. It's just a weird feeling. But like the way the cars is, since everybody like has to go to town, and so this car was going there, so everybody just packed in. I was sitting in the back, like you know, the bed of the truck with my grandmother, and everything was just moving like. Sh 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 you know, and it was making your head so dizzy, and it just made me feel more sick. But anyways, we got there, and then when we were getting, like, closer to, like, where my parents lived, everybody was like, oh, yeah, the Mazungas are not there. Like, you should just go home. Like, you old lady, take your child home. Like, what are you doing bothering these people? They were just, like, coming at us for no reason. We have never seen these people. They're like, what What do you think you're doing here? Who do you think you are coming to try to talk to these Mazungas, asking for help? Like, get your, like... I was like, gosh, this is me listening to them when uh, when I was little. This is how they're talking to my grandmother. You know what my grandmother did? She just she just continues. Like she never she this is why I'm like grandma. Well, actually I don't call her grandma, I call her Toto, which means mother. So that's I still call her up to this day. I call her Toto. But yeah. So it's just like she never really she just doesn't like conflict and she she just it's a waste of her time, I guess. So but if, if people were to do that to me, it would not be a waste of my time to, like, give them something back. It, it would actually make me happy to give that back to them. Okay, let me just calm down because I'm getting overworked because it actually makes me mad the way now thinking about it. A lot happened and I never really processed it, you know, so it's hitting hard, so. People there are called, like, the Mzungus, which is the, basically means, like, white people, but... So Don't everybody say like, that. I've been saying that the whole video. Everybody's just so negative. Like, I don't know. So rude. So no, everybody was, like, telling us, like, they're not there and stuff like that to just turn around and go back. Mm -hmm. But we, like, continue to just go. When we finally got inside, like, my grandmother told them everything like that. And then I remember my sister, but she wasn't my sister then. So she was, like, we were, like, in one room. This is we the first playing, time I've seen my like, name. I didn't speak English at all, so we were, These like, emails. just using like i don't know like how you talk to a baby like you want a ball or like like a know, toddler not like, a baby and stuff like that you would hold up a ball if you want to, if you want to drink water like then you get a cup and like you just like you will finally like figure it out how to communicate and stuff because like the way we speak is very different obviously because you can't just say i didn't even know i did not know one single word for in english wait i didn't know anything in english i don't know what i just said but I didn't know anything in English, so I couldn't even ask for anything. My grandma did not speak English, uh, so and my brother did not come with us because, yeah. So it was just, like, us in the room. But then we had, like, this translator. Um, let me come down. We had this translator guy, um, but he's not really, like, just a random guy. He's, like, actually our friend when we lived there. Now, I don't know how things are because my parents but he was like he translated and so when he was like i think my parents like called him over so that way he could like translate between us so that way it wasn't so that way they could make sure like are you sure you want to do this and you're like so my parents like so do you want to do this and then he'll turn to say so do you want to do this he's like yeah yeah okay so she said mm, and then they did, you know so that's how it was and i'm just there sitting mm, because i don't know what's happening i don't know that she's gonna leave me i didn't know she's gonna leave me just like that don't know why did you leave but yeah so that's just what happened right there but it was like the first time i've seen them at their own house with just my grandmother and i instead of like the whole village or like a ton of other black people around does that make sense so just like a white house it was just muzungus and i'm just like mm, i don't know what to think so mm, yeah oh shoot it's loading stop it stop it satan okay i guess we'll wait let me go back a little bit. Or like, like you know, that's how like we communicate and stuff like that. You would hold up a ball if you want, if you want to drink water, like then you get a cup and like you just like, you will finally like figure it out how to communicate and stuff like that when you mm -hmm. want to communicate and you need to. So, anyway. But Satan is really trying to come at me, and I'm really not liking it because um, I think it's time that I made this video. So. I can't believe I started crying. Well, wow. like I knew I was gonna let myself cry, but when it like, when it was like, you know, when if something was going to make me cry, 
But, like, I didn't know I was going to, like, start crying like that. Like, I was just sharing, like, a memory. And then... I was just sharing a memory. And then I just started crying. I did not see it coming. My tears just spilled out. I can't believe it. But it feels really good. My brain feels more clear. I can think more clearly. Probably should do school after this. Oh. School. Even though in this video, my girl was like, yes, please put them in school. And I'm like, mom, why are you putting me in school? Bro? I don't even learn anything. Like that. Yeah, but yeah. I don't know why you need to know that, but I just shared it. I don't know why this is not loading. You guys already seen the rest of this video on your own, right? This one? Like, I don't know why it's loading. Let's see if this plays now. So, my, so we were playing and stuff like that. There were like a lot of kids and it was very new for me. What happened to the quality of the video? And I noticed that and I was like, something. But like, I didn't like <sighs> notice, notice, but I was like, something is right. Like the quality what, is bad. I'm sorry. On. So first of all, they spoke like a completely different language. They sounded like they were from outer space or something. And then, like, the way that everything was so clean and like, Jane, 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 Jane. And I was, That's it was funny. really new. Everything was new to me. So that was like a distraction. They sent me to a different room with my siblings. Well, like, to play with the kids and stuff like that. So when I was playing, my grandmother left. And then, She's left me. Like, I didn't understand. And, of course, if she was to tell she me, like, she's leaving me with them, I would have, like, I wouldn't have let that happen. So, like, she just had to leave. But after I found out she left, I started crying and stuff like that. So for a long time, I was just like, I was living sad. Like that. My grandmother would come and visit, and then we would drive out to the. You guys don't even know. I am like this close to my grandma. Like, I love her so much, but back then I was even closer to her. Like, everywhere she went, I would go. Even if she's just visiting, like, going next door neighbor to, like, just get something, I would go with her. And I'll always be holding her skirt. Like, please take me with you. That's how it was. I was like, take all of me with you. This is how it was. And she could just be going, you know, to even take a bath or something. I'm like, I'll carry the water for you. Let us go. You know? That's just how it was. And, like, so the fact that she left me. And I was not holding her skirt. I was so sad. I was so sad. But yeah. But like, I didn't know how to express myself because I didn't know what was happening, you know? Everything just was happening so fast, so I didn't even know what was, you know? I couldn't process it. So now I'm thinking about it when I'm this old. I'm 17 years now. I was, I was thinking about it, and I was like, gosh. I never really actually took the time to process that. That's probably why... I struggle so much with like certain things because like I don't I never like take the time to process things once it happens to me I'm always like oh just push it back it's fine but then it just builds up you know what I mean so it's just like it's good to cry I need to do it more often but yeah village and then like we just kept doing that so anyways like I lived with them for a long time now and then they started working because now my older brother, he was like, he was like kind of, he was more educated now because he's like an adult. And so he wasn't like, an adult, he I lied. He, he just old enough to know what was happening. Was. And with the help of Mr. R, he like they kind of. could communicate and understand stuff like that and explain the stuff like the situation and stuff like that to my grandmother so she could know what was happening. So my parents like told him like, like they wanted to adopt me and stuff like that. Oh guys okay i made this sound so simple right here but it was not that simple at all because first of all like uh what is it mm, what is that person called my dad said it the other day to me fd1 wait e. okay i can't remember it because it was the first time i heard about it because i did it i knew because in my village is this like an elder and then he like runs like this district place you know what i mean i didn't know like there was a english name for him but I just heard it the other day in my English. I'm still improving. So, yeah. But I forgot. I'm sorry. But I'm going to have to just put it, like, on the screen somewhere what he said. Because I I really don't remember. But anyways. So, we had to talk to him. First of all. First of all. Before we even got to him. It wasn't even just my family's decision. Even though all these people wanted me to die. They're like, oh, we still need to have a say in this. Because how are you just going to come to our village and take one of our children away? That's, I'm like, didn't you guys want me to die? 
you hear that song video now now you guys want something from it mm -hmm, i see okay so like all the village was like they had to you know they all wanted to say something and besides like you want to make things right with the village you don't want to just like uh i don't know upset everybody all at once but so we had to talk to the, like the elders and like the elders of my village like they're the ones that actually get to say like what's happening because if it was for them and they said like no your daughter um she can't be adopted then we would have to respect them because as the elders of the village everybody respects them they can say oh yeah go run two miles and go bring me some salt from the next village you get you get up and get your shoes and you start running to go get it because like you just have so much respect for them and it's just like you can't tell them no or else you get a whooping like a bad whooping and like you'll be an example uh for everybody else so it's just like you just listen i guess is what i'm trying to say so like the elders had to say a say and they were like yes yeah, okay but like we had to meet multiple times because english and Nakarudong sometimes mm, it didn't make so much sense so we had to talk to them a lot of the times and then said it's, it's okay so now we talked to the lcd whatever i don't remember what he, he, we talked to him and then he's like we had to like make lots of meetings and stuff like that we had to make a lot of meeting meetings and then i don't know things got situated and then he said it was okay so now we had to go to court and they're like are you trying to steal this girl from uganda to take to america and like and like so how much you gonna pay me that's just at the end everybody just cares about themselves and what they're getting from this situation actually like nobody cares about you they just want what you have to offer to them you know what i mean so um it was just like oh so they just made this the process so much harder because they wanted more money so they're like oh well, let's just delay the process because you know these muzungus actually really seem to care about these kids so let's just make them chill out here look for a little bit and get more money and then once we get bored okay well, fine you guys can go to america because that's what actually happened they're just like oh yeah let's just go to court oh no no the the judge is not here uh just come back the next day we already traveled from Cotito all the way to kampala which is a 12 hour drive and we made that in one day with all of us kids so we get there and then you're telling us no you can't come here like what the judge is not here like what kind of court uganda get things all right i love uganda but like come on we gotta do better mm, we gotta do better but that's just i had to say that real quick just so you because i made it seem like it was a really easy process like oh yeah so you guys want to get adopted mm -hmm. okay so let's just sign these papers and it's not that simple i'm gonna try ah! okay i'm trying not like to mumble or repeat myself so about that and my grandmother said well like as long as like you're going to take care of her and stuff like that then it's okay so like they started working on like the adoption the stuff. process and it took us a very long time because like the court was <clears throat> was being so stubborn because of they're like how can how can you want to adopt this black child like you're white don't you see that you're white like why do you want to come and get them so like they were just giving us problems like for no reason and making us pay more money like everybody just wants money so like we put so much time into that and stuff like that and it took us like years and years and then finally we were just waiting for like the passports and stuff like that to come in so that we can leave to go to america guys the thing is like we made an appointment because we live in cotito we don't want to just like go all the way down there for no reason besides we have a life here there's other people that need our help too so we can't just like leave whenever so we have to like plan it out and they said oh yeah just come on these days and that'll be like our court day so of course like we go like two weeks early just so we can get like i'm pretty sure i do that turn every single time in my videos i'm not even joking but yeah so we made it there and then they're just like oh yeah they're not here and they just keep it's just so annoying the system Museveni Museveni listen to me now you better do your job now or else I'll come and take your job for you I'm just saying but anyways I hope please don't come at me but it didn't like really come in as fast as we wanted to because it kept pushing like the dates back and then like we had to get all our fam because my other brother he's adopted too so we had to wait for their family to like figure out everything this one and that keeps coming in the room it took their family a long time too and it took mine but <clears throat> so 
anyways it took us so long to get like the the papers figured out and stuff like that and it just so in the meantime we moved to a new village which was like still it was like two hours drive away okay away from where we were and when we lived there that we moved to a new village which was like still it was like two hours drive away from where we were and when we lived there that it was oh <laughs> the boys were taking interest in me i was only like what nine or something like so that but like they were already taking interest in me and it was and it was very weird because i was such like a tom girl and stuff like that i used i was a tomboy I'm sorry. I was a tomboy. Not a tom girl. Even though I feel like you should be able to say it both ways, but English. So, and my mom said that's the way. And my mom, she does a very good job correcting me. And she makes sure to correct me whenever I say something that's not right. She said it's a tomboy. Because after the video, I was like, Mama, I said a tom girl in my video. And uh, it's, she's like, you mean a tomboy? And I'm like, no, a tom girl. You know, like, the girl that's, like, acts like, you know, a little bit more like a boy. Dresses up like a little bit more, but, but, like, it's a girl. She's like, that's a tomboy. I'm like, Mama, but that does not make any sense. Because you're a girl, but you're trying to be a tom, a tommy. Okay, I'm just, let me just, yeah. Just play outside with, like, the boys and stuff like that. I was crazy. I was very wild, unkept, and not a lady at all so i was like playing all the time and then this is, things were getting out of hand with the guys I'm glad they so did not give any examples that was when my parents decided that we need to move guys it wasn't only it wasn't just because like okay look rico girl like not girls boys are looking at you let's go to america now you know it wasn't like that it's like we've been working on having because my parents I feel like they they already wanted to go back, but like they just wanted they just needed more reasons. I'm not trying to like come at them or throw any shade, but I just feel like the, there was other stuff that was like happening. Like plus that was happening. Those guys are just dirty, bro. Those guys are mm, they're mine. And they want to do to little girls. I'm like stay away. No bad energy. Stay very far away from me. So, but. It was just like that happened and then i think they were there like after the four years they, they were planning on leaving already so just like i don't know why i made it sound like okay let's just leave like what but yeah because my dad i remember when we were like staying there and then my dad's like you know i've been praying a lot and i feel like jesus was like telling us like it's time to go back to america and i'm like at the time i was excited because i did not know what was happening so I was just like, oh, yay. Like, you know, I'm going to see America because I've always, you know, I think we went and visited a, uh, we visited America one time. So we visited America one time. And so I was like, okay, it was actually really nice. Even though I don't really remember a lot because like I was, I not forced to meet so many people, but my parents just like, everybody's like, oh, so is this a new adopted girl you have? What? Is she from that village? What? that's just how people were and so i just like i don't really remember like a lot because people are doing too much and i didn't even really know you know english very well like i knew it but like i still don't understand a lot of it that i feel like i should but yeah, anyways that's just you know like my other sister like the guys wouldn't touch her because she's obviously white and they have more respect for her but as for now them, i know what I that is them, so they said, well, she's like a villager like us, so we can do whatever we want to her. But they didn't, so they just didn't understand the process of, like, how my situation was. So they just, like, tried to treat me, like, the way they thought they could treat a girl. Because other girls, normally, you can do whatever, they, like, you want to them. And nobody it's would really even, sad. Like, call, like, tell on you and stuff like that. So when they try to do stuff like that to me, like, obviously, like, I would tell my parents. And then they would get in Better? trouble. Better? Like, they weren't used to that kind of stuff. So, but after, like, things were just getting out of hand and my parents couldn't understand that karma jong, which I understood perfectly fine. So, like, the insults Even up to this like day. that hurt me more than them because when, when you try to explain it to someone else, they just don't understand the same way as you do because you're the one that hurt and they were directed to you and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So it just feels differently. 
that. I remember like telling him stuff like that, and I was like, uh uh, like it's bad. But, anyways, so after that, my parents decided that we need to get passports and move away. And that was when we like tried to work happened. even extra harder to get our passports. And it, they just took so long because they kept so demanding waiting. money and stuff like that. And finally, like, we just paid for it and then we got everything like signed and guys people were demanding so much money for passports for us and me and my brother because they like they saw that my parents were rich well okay i don't know how however you want to look at it if like you have more money when you're in the village like you obviously seem more rich but when you're when my family here in america i said we are very comfortable like we are blessed we we don't have more than we we need and we, you know what i mean we just have a perfect amount because god just blessed us and he's always taking care of us so but like i wouldn't say yeah i'm just gonna say that but they just kept like demanding so much money and my dad he's he grew up in africa so he knows how to like bargain and stuff so he's like okay but why are we paying like more money than so and so blah 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 my dad is good at uh what is it called negotiating negotiating is that the word i think so but if it's not i'm gonna cut it out so that's what he did he just like would talk to them and besides he's very friendly to the people so like oh hello hello sir how are you and he's like i'm good how are you sir and he's like friends now so like okay you could go that's just how it was but mm -hmm. completed and my other brother's stuff completed too so we were ready to move to the united states and then that's when we moved so now we're in america oh. Oh, i hope it's okay so oh, now we're in america baby. and my life is very different and i'm not saying I'm not, not saying like my village is so horrible stuff like that. It's just they don't have God and stuff like that, and they're just like it's a hustle life and stuff like that. So everybody's just like trying to help themselves and stuff like that. But if I, I say stuff like that, that one more time, me and my family. So I don't know. I don't want you to like think that I hate my village because I don't. I love them. I still go back and visit. And I and i still speak the language and it's just i just that was just like the beginning of everything and then now i'm in america and life is a it's it's not better it's just different so so at the end of my video i want to say that god is good and everything that he does is for a reason and that he loves you very much and he wants the best for you so I just wanted you to know that that he already wrote your story from the beginning before you were even born so he knows Preach. exactly what you're going to do and stuff like that and he just loves you very much and thank you for listening to my story and i'll see you guys later so bye wow okay guys <clears throat> I don't really know what to say after finishing that video. I'm happy that I did a reaction video because it's been something that's been, I don't know, weighing on my heart. It's just been something that I've been wanting to do, but it's just like, I've, I was too scared. I was too scared what people are gonna, what people are gonna say. So I wanted to wait and besides, I thought, <clears throat> when I did the video, I was like, I feel like I'm ready to share the story now. I was not ready at all. I was. It was just one of those things, like, at a time, uh, my, uh, I guess you could say, there is to say, but <clears throat> he was like, oh, yeah, you know, because, like, I remember one time I was talking with him on the phone, I was like, yeah, I think I want to share my adoption story, and he's like, what, you want to share that with YouTube already, and I was like, yeah, it's totally fine, like, I feel like I'm ready, and I can handle this, he's like, okay, I don't think you're ready, maybe you should wait a few more, like, you know, months, and maybe a year, and I'm like, no, like, I can do this i'm ready for this and he's like okay i'll support you whatever but uh so i decided to do it and but i'm happy that i already made the video because like i don't regret anything i said because mm, life is full of lessons probably gonna watch this and say oh cringe uh. but yeah so that was just like my reaction video to my own adoption story and i don't know thank you for watching this video i hope you found it entertaining um please don't judge my 
crying face because it's really embarrassing actually it's, it's embarrassing because uh that's why i didn't put any makeup on today because i was like i know i'm gonna cry i know i'm gonna cry i just don't know when in the video so i just like i'm not gonna put anything on and look can you tell i cried and guys i think i might drop a skincare routine soon sheesh okay so anyways i'm just gonna go now and i hope you enjoyed this video and i'll see you guys oh guys please don't forget to follow my instagram at official underscore coat i'll probably put it up on the screen or the description box below and then please don't forget to like comment share subscribe turn the post notification on so that way you'll be notified every time i post new videos because you guys you know how i since i'm the youtuber these are my videos i can check the analytics of it and why 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 is it saying to me that 77 percent of the people that watch my videos are not even subscribed to me eh? like what you guys you're being rude now at this point you're just you're just being rude to me so please make sure to subscribe to my channel support me and i just want to say thank you so much for all the love and support i've gotten thus far and i really do appreciate you guys um i can't believe my doctor's story is that 1.6k views like that's that's more than i thought was gonna you know because i was like oh maybe i'll just post it but not like nobody has to see it because i'll post the other videos like really fast so this one will be at, like the very bottom that's my plan but i've had help on the way to grow my channel from you guys and from great friends that I met online but like i guys i always meet friends online and online i always meet friends online for reason i don't know why but they turn out to be really good people and i'm just so thankful that i met this one girl um i'm not sure she wants me to say her name so i won't but she's she's the one that's really helped me like grow my channel she's helped me by giving me tips on how to grow and i just want to say thank you so much and i'm gonna start working on making uh more videos i'm so sorry this one is long but i love you guys and please stay safe and i'll see you guys in my next video bye Skin girl, got skin just like pearls